It's been about four months since I waved goodbye to my Logitech G Series wheels and finally upgraded to the mid range Fanatec CSL Elite wheelbase. In that time, I've really been active on my favourite sims such as iRacing and dabbled in some new ones such as R Factor 2 and ACC. Those four months are plenty of time to really get my head around the new dimension of force feedback that comes with such an upgrade. So, months down the road, here are some fully cooked thoughts on the leap from the G29 to the CSL Elite. If you're short on time, here are the headlines. Yes, it's a massive step up from a G29. Yes, it is good enough to justify the cost difference. Yes, it will help you find speed faster. Yep, it works fine on a desk. And yes, I am completely happy with mine. And we'll talk about a load of things in this video, but that's pretty much it in a nutshell, at least. My G29 cost me 200 quid. My Fanatec configuration with my optional upgrades cost me more than that. But I'm a mega tightwad and I hate getting bad value for money, so hitting the checkout button for me was a leap of faith. I didn't know anybody else who had a Fanatec set up, I just had to trust that it would be as good as I hoped. I don't want it to be a leap of faith for you though, I want to paint a picture of what it's like so you can better inform yourself as to whether sim racing is becoming a big enough passion to step up into the enthusiasts world. Quick note, I've got a Fanatec affiliate link that takes you to the Fanatec store in the description below. Please use that if you do head there and that will help me out mega. And thank you very much to those who have already done so, I really appreciate it. I want to start with what I think about the experience as a whole. So going from a G29 to a Fanatec CSL Elite is a massive jump, let's just make that clear. The CSL is in another class, and that's what makes it such an enticing step up for G29 owners at the moment once they can convince themselves that the cost will be justified. If you're anything like me, then when you upgrade something, you want to know it's an upgrade. About 15 years ago, I swapped my Sony earbuds for a set of Sennheiser HD headphones, and all of a sudden, everything on my music catalogue had twice as much character, and I've relived that feeling all over again with the CSL Elite. The agility and strength of a belt drive wheel over the G29's gear drive means everything has so much more vibrancy. There's no better way to demonstrate what I mean by that by using the force feedback test button within the settings which kind of needs a warning label on it because I'm sure it's been responsible for more than a few heart attacks from people curiously pressing the button without a clue what it actually does. Just watch and see for yourself what it's all about. It's thumb snappingly powerful, and considering that the CSL Elite is the entry level Fanatec belt drive wheel, when you first try it after coming from a G29, you might be thinking to yourself, if this is the entry level wheelbase, then why on earth would you need any more power than this? But obviously, you grow into it, you start to use it, but if you thought that it's somehow going to be weak because it's the lowest level Fanatec wheel, you're going to be pleasantly surprised it's got enough torque for anybody. So let's try and describe the actual force feedback a little bit more. Now that I've gushed about how much more enjoyable and flavorful it is over a G29, I need to try and explain why. So let's imagine you're about to hit this chicane at Monza, full aggression. Your inside front wheel hits the curb and the front end bounces. If you do this on a G29, you will feel a little jolt, but if you grip the wheel with any kind of force, you can pretty much just ignore the forces that the sim is trying to communicate to you through the wheel. On a CSL Elite, this isn't the case. You absolutely will be receiving the message loud and clear, with a big deflection on the steering wheel, which you won't be resisting. The speed at which the force feedback can change direction is also much more rapid compared to a G29, which means that as you drive on tracks with uneven surfaces such as Sebring, you're practically tasting the contours in the road that just weren't really there before. When you initially make the upgrade to the CSL Elite, you may find yourself thinking, oh god, I feel like I'm barely in control of this GT3 car that I was absolutely flying in yesterday. How is getting chucked around by curbs, bumps and undulations an advantage? Well, it's something you get over really quickly and you start to take signals and cues from what the car's telling you underneath those tyres. If you're braking hard but you detect that the road surface is becoming less favourable, you'll instinctively ease off to prevent a lock-up. Or if you've run slightly wide on a corner exit and you can easily tell that your outside wheels are not yet off the danger zone, you're more likely to be able to control the throttle according to what your car's telling you. 
I also find that the differences in the force feedback languages between iRacing, Assetto Corsa and R Factor 2 are much more obvious and varied now. And certainly in the case of R Factor 2, it's easy to understand why it's held up as the best sim for force feedback, because I'm feeling a great amount more of what it was designed to do. The first time I strayed onto a painted kerb on R Factor 2 and felt the outside tyre slide across a smooth surface as it locked up, I was legitimately impressed with how authentic it felt. It's all with a belt drive that delivers force sufficient to really work your arms and lift the heart rate to put you in that zone where you start to trick your mind into being immersed. Since upgrading to the Fanatec CSL Elite, I can say that the rate of my mistakes has dropped quite a lot. On the G29 there were moments where you were certain that you nailed a corner but you still found yourself having an incident or losing the back end. You always kind of felt like you were on the edge, but the edge was just that little bit fuzzy, so it was hard sometimes to know if you were on the edge or over it. On my old wheel I'd have to put my spins down to running a bit too close to the limit and trying too hard and telling myself that if I want to make it the full race distance I need to just back off just a little bit. Now I can confidently say that this uncertainty is just no longer there. With the CSL, if I make a mistake, I can only really blame myself and I can tell what I did wrong straight away. If I push too much and reach the limit of the car, it's my fault if I spin because there's always that split second where the wheel is telling you you're about to have an incident and where the instinct should take over and rescue a leery corner. If you sometimes feel like a spin or an accident just comes out of nowhere, then this is sort of what I'm talking about. I've lost count of the times now where I'm convinced that a spin or an accident was avoided only by virtue of better force feedback, so quite frankly I'm surprised that I did as well as I did on my old G29. This is something that I've heard many times before and at the time you don't give it much thought, but having experienced the difference first hand I can totally vouch for it. This boost to consistency is absolutely real and not a myth. So if you find yourself racing amongst people that are a similar pace to you but make less mistakes, chances are you're at the limit of what your G29 can do for you and it's probably time to move on. So let's say you're feeling like it's time to make the move away from the G29. There's a Fanatec CSL Elite, yeah, but what about the Fanatec Club Sport wheelbase, or CSW as it's known? What is that all about? I've had a try of a CSW and I would say that it is noticeably smoother and a little bit stronger but by no means does it render the CSL Elite redundant at all. Simply put, if you have got the money for a CSW then go for it, it's capable of stronger output, it's a bit smoother because of the V-rib belts and probably a little bit more durable and resilient than the CSL because it's got two motors rather than the one. But there's not really a big gap in terms of what you actually feel in your hands when you're driving between the two models. Certainly nothing like the gap between a, a G29 to a CSL. I also want to revisit a point I made in my prior video that if you are using a G29 and want to go faster, a wheel upgrade won't be the silver bullet, but I want to add a bit of dimension to that viewpoint because I've reflected on it since then, and it's not really correct. If you spend long enough with an entry level wheel like the G29, then you will, eventually, become fast you'll be able to reach 99% of your maximum ability with a G29, but you won't be having as much fun doing it, and that remaining 1% will probably always be out of reach. I'm also quite sure now that it would take a lot less time to get to that same level of practice with a better wheel. If you're just starting out with sim racing, I think it would be much easier for newcomers to see eye to eye with everything if you have a CSL Elite or better to start off with. With that said, Logitech deserves credit for having been so many people's first encounter with racing wheels and I'd be lying if I didn't just used to get on with it and have a great time in all my sims with uh, Live for Speed, Dirt Rally, the lot. And believe me, there are some guys in Eastern Europe who could whoop the lot of you in Live for Speed using just a mouse and keyboard. And let's face facts as well, a Fanatec wheel and pedal setup is going to cost at least two times what the G29 would have cost you, depending on what you add to it. And it's expensive for some demographics and exchange rates too, so it is more of a fork in the road than a step up the ladder because of it. But it's not the same as comparison between, let's say, a, a 20 quid spanner set from the DIY shop and a 200 quid set from Snap-on, where it's basically no different for 99% of stuff, unless you really, really like spanners. The first lap using a CSL after using a G29 for all those years was a real, oh my god, awesome moment. And if you're on the brink of spending a lot of money, 
that's exactly what you want to get. It's four months on from me, and that feeling has not gone away one bit. But not so fast, because there is one bad bit about Fanatec kit. I've had no problems with my own equipment, but I've got my fingers crossed that it stays that way, because whilst every manufacturer out there has to deal with the odd defect or dud, Fanatec customer service seems to be particularly slumbersome, and this leads to people running a bigger gauntlet than they need to when things go wrong. So in the EU I've heard stories about people having to post their equipment back to Germany at their own expense to be repaired and it taking ages. And when you're without your sim racing kit that's a painful delay and hard to swallow after paying good money. It's because of this irritation factor that people who have issues with their equipment and have to deal with Fanatec customer service tend to be so put off that they tell the world about it. So just be aware of this before you buy so you don't get wound up too much in the unlikely event that it happens to you. The final word on the upgrade from the Logitech G29 to the Fanatec CSL Elite is that I'm very, very satisfied with mine and I feel like it was well worth the money. I'm the kind of person that researches a lot, makes sure to get a better value for money option and I hate nothing more than spending a lot of cash and not having my socks blown off. Well I didn't have that problem. The Fanatec CSL Elite is a gigantic upgrade from a G29 and I don't feel shortchanged in any way, shape or form. When you're trying to decide whether it's time to upgrade, it's this sort of feedback from the front that helps out a lot, which is why I offer mine. If you love sim racing and you've been using a G29 for any length of time, you will thank yourself for taking the plunge and making the upgrade to a belt driven wheel, be it a Fanatec CSL Elite or similar. It's going to make all your sim racing way more fun, boost the immersion factor and ultimately make each hour you spend more fulfilling and it will do it by such a level that it will justify your hard earned cash. And that's it. Do comment if you've got questions because I'll answer them pretty sharpish and leave your own feedback if you've already upgraded because that will help others visiting this video to do the same. If you are going to upgrade, use the link in the description to go to the Fanatec site and it will help me out so much because Fanatec rewards affiliates with every purchase so you'll be helping put money in my pocket without taking anything extra out of yours. Subscribe too if you haven't and let's push this baby over a thousand subs. Thanks for sticking with me and I'll see you next time.